guys it's yaya and welcome back to my channel i'm super excited to introduce to you guys a new series called let's test it so basically i'm going to be getting ingredients and i'm going to be testing them out to see if they can make different products okay so today i'm doing gelling agents and thickeners um these sometimes can be used interchangeably sometimes not and i'm basically just going to place a one percent solution of each into water and just see how they congeal or what kind of consistency they have viscosity they have and let you guys know so i'm going to start off with a risto flex avc i believe that's how you pronounce it and um yeah it's kind of like a very fine white powder and I just place that in the water. Um, it does kind of have a smell, but not really. I don't know. I can't really explain it. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to mix it up. Uh, and I did time this, you guys, but I did not record myself timing it. But um, yeah, this started to congeal up pretty fast. I saw it wasn't, it didn't take a lot for it to start gelling up. I noticed it immediately. And it became harder and harder for me to kind of stir it. And that's actually really, really good depending on what type of product you are trying to make because not only does it work you only need a small percentage in order to get this amazing effect so i think the maximum usage rate recommended is like 1.2 and i use one percent so that's pretty awesome i also want to mention that there was no heating involved i just placed the powder into cold water and i was able to mix it up with the spoon now in a perfect world i would have had a small enough immersion blender to mix this up more efficiently um but this right here just shows you you don't really need it so if you're at home you don't have immersion blender and you only have cold water you can make a creation so this is pretty awesome and very simple and easy all right you guys so all in all this took maybe a good five minutes to get this consistency and you can see most of the powder has dissolved and you can no longer see it and look how beautiful that texture is look at that viscosity it's not going anywhere it's not dripping at all this would make a beautiful gel if i had to compare it to anything uh like your regular hair styling gels like um eco styler or if you are trying to make some kind of lip gloss or something like that this is a beautiful beautiful texture and it can stand on its own one thing about uh risto flex you want to be uh, careful about though is that it's very sensitive to certain salts and other ingredients um it can cause the viscosity to loosen or disappear altogether. So you have to be very careful of what you mix it to together with, okay? Aristoflex can also be used as an emulsifier or a thickener. It doesn't have to just be used as a gelling agent. So if you want to make an emulsion with water and oil mixing together, as long as the oil phase is 5% or less, you can make an emulsion like lotion or cream using Arista, uh, Aristoflex. And I think that is so freaking cool cool you guys so yeah if you're okay with a synthetic product which i haven't known it to be harmful or, or anything definitely give it a try now we're moving on to the well-known xanthan gum but this is xanthan gum clear which is a cosmetic grade of xanthan gum there is the food grade out there um, but it probably just won't work as efficiently as xanthan gum clear and also xanthan gum clear is going to give you a very um, clear gel if you're looking to make a clear gel whereas the food grade might be a little bit more cloudy okay now I've used xanthan gum before I love using xanthan gum I am more familiar with using xanthan gum in the perfect world <laughs> for this test I would have used the immersion blender but I wanted to stay consistent and use a spoon it's very hard dealing with xanthan gum especially when you're trying to get it hydrated um, sometimes you want to maybe uh, mix it with glycerin before you add it to the water or you want to create or some kind of vortex in the water um, So that you can get the powder into the water uh, more evenly, okay? This is a cosmetic grade of xanthan gum, but it is naturally sourced if you want to use that to make natural creations This is perfect for you Xanthan gum cannot be used as an emulsifier, but it definitely can help thicken and add texture and viscosity to your emulsions if you want to use it that way. It's pretty awesome. I really love it, but it does have a stringier texture, almost like flaxseed gel versus the Aristoflex, which is more like an eco-styler gel. 
All right, now we're gonna move on to Gargum. I heard a lot about Gargum. I do have the food grade, just a disclaimer. This is not the cosmetic version, but I wanted to show some versatility in this test. I know most of you may have food grade um, emulsifiers at home, and it might be more easier or accessible for you to get the food grade and test out your products that way. So this is why I wanted to test at least one of them as the food grade. This is probably why it's not as efficient as the others. Um, you can see that it's not gelling at all, but it definitely can be used as an emulsifier, stabilizer, and viscosity, increased viscosity, but you would just have to use a whole lot more to get that, okay? Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to definitely do some more tests with Gargum, just using it at a higher um, usage rate. All right, this is the final result. What do you guys think about these different textures and viscosity? Now remember, this is only a 1% usage rate for each, okay? So definitely adding more could probably get you a different texture of viscosity um, that you're looking for for the Xanthan gum and the Gar gum. But I wanted to compare them to the Aristoflex at just 1%, okay? There's a huge difference. Um, so you could definitely use less Aristoflex to get just a hundred percent better gel if you're looking to make a gel but don't sleep on the others they can definitely be used for emotions or different shampoos conditioners depending on if you just want to use a thickener and they're more affordable okay so it just depends on what you're looking for there is no right or wrong it's just what are you looking for out of your product, out of your gel, out of your conditioner, out of your shampoo, okay? So these all can be utilized in some way. Some are more affordable, some are more efficient at a lower usage rate, which is, hey, that's where the money's at, <laughs> okay? All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a closer look at the texture viscosity of each of the products. You can see here that the Aristoflex, the viscosity is not moving at all. And then of course the Gar Gum is free flowing. And then of course the Xanthan Gum is more like just like a flexi gel. If you ever use flexi gel or aloe vera gel, that's the texture that you're getting from that, okay? To get a better understanding of texture viscosity and the stability of these products, Think of a face cleanser that has exfoliating jojoba beads or something like that. Would the bead stay suspended in the solution? For Aristoflex, definitely. For Xanthan gum, maybe a little bit, but some may float to the bottom. And then versus the Gar gum, yeah, it probably would float straight to the bottom at super, super fast rate, okay? So that is the difference in what I'm trying to say. But again, this is only the 1% um, usage rate for each. All right, I really do hope that helped you guys get a better understanding of each of those at a usage rate of 1%. But now I'm going to increase the usage rate for Xanthan and Gargum to 2% and see if I can compare that to um, the Aristoflex and see if there's a different similarity in that, okay? So starting off with the Xanthan gum, I'm going to go ahead and just add um, another 1% to equal 2%. And that is the max usage rate for Xanthan gum immediately i regretted not having immersion blender this was very very hard to mix up together but when i finally got it to mix together i was actually pleasantly surprised um it came very very close to getting that thick viscosity like the aristoflex had but it still was very stringy and when i mean stringy i mean you lift it up and it has that like cheese effect <laughs> or that slimy syrup simple syrup like effect yeah that's what i mean by that so yeah it still had um the aloe vera flaxseed gel texture but um it was a little bit more thick just harder to move the spoon around but um compared to aristoflex you would have to use way more xanthan gum to get that effect and then you still probably wouldn't get that effect if you're trying to make like a clear gel but like I said if you're just using it for emulsion um, like mixing water and oil to make a cream or a lotion um, it can provide such a beautiful texture and it's so beautiful on the skin it feels great the Arista Flex also has a beautiful feel to the skin it's very fresh and light and I love love using it but look how close they came yeah that looks pretty good you know it's, it's clear it looks like a really good gel but you can definitely tell that the xanthan gum is still free flowing, whereas the Aristoflex is not moving at all. So, 
All right, moving on to the guard gum. This was actually a fail. I'll go ahead and let you guys know. <laughs> it just would not, would not mix together. I could not get it to dissolve. I probably could have added more water to get it to dissolve, but I wanted to stay fair to the test and I didn't want to change any variables, okay? Um, like I said, it would be easy to mix this up with immersion blender or some kind of electrical or stand mixer and you'll be fine but since i used a spoon i just could not get it to dissolve you guys and i was literally stirring this for maybe a good 30 minutes <laughs> okay i just couldn't get it to do it um but that just lets you know that this will probably be a little harder to work with versus the others okay and then it got like this oatmeal type I don't know how to explain this texture, but it definitely could be used to make like a curling custard or something like that. I think it'd be beautiful. I know it's probably unfair because this is the food grade versus cosmetic grades, which are formulated, designed to work more efficiently. You know what I'm saying? So, but I just wanted to let you guys know if you had this at home and you wanted to use it, you definitely can, but probably at a lower usage rate, okay? The 1% versus 2% usage rate is so drastic. The 2% is like super jelly, like a jam. And then you got the 1%, which was like water. That's crazy. How it made such a huge difference. Okay, so what do you guys think? Can you compare these and, and just let me know what do you guys think and if you would use them, okay? And let me know if this test helped in the comment section down below. I love hearing from you guys. Of course, I added a preservative just so that I could see how these hold up in the long run. But yeah, that's it, you guys. What do you think about this video? What do you think about the new series, Let's Test It? And what ingredients would you like for me to test in the future? Leave the comments down below, okay? Also, I get so many questions about Yaya's creations as far as the Shea Bay Butter line. Yes, I'm still selling it, you guys. Check me out on Instagram. I can try to stay updated on there a little bit more than on YouTube. Um, I have been really busy fulfilling orders and working on other projects. So I'm sorry, guys, that I've been missing in action. But the website is still up. All the orders are on back order, you guys. Just go ahead and read the information about that. And um, I just love hearing from you guys. Thank you so much for the beautiful comments. You guys are so awesome and yeah like subscribe comment all that good stuff hit that notification bell and i'll see you in the next one bye i got blood on my hands right now and i'm stumbling